Well, hello. Somebody asked me, well, not one person, but many asked me to do some videos on my guitars. And, well, this is the first one and I will uh, talk a bit and show some of my parlor guitars. Now, what's a parlor guitar? It's one of these and it's usually a small guitar. They were made uh, for ladies to play in their parlor. And um, they're usually not larger in the lower bout than about 13 inches. And this uh, one is a Stella. You can see it on the headstock. And it was made, well, somewhere in the 20s. I'm not sure about this one. And it has the mother of toilet seat, yes. Uh, not mother of pearl, sadly. Uh, made uh, fretboards and it is plastic. It was uh, um, highly fashionable to do that in the 20s and also they made guitars. Uh, this, this one um, is really only for slide because the frets are not really uh, in good condition so I use it for slide only. It doesn't play really well. Okay, um, also these guitars um, were cheaply made in those days and uh, this one Stella brand was made by the Oscar Schmidt company where a big factory in I think in New Jersey and they are also leather braced and this means that the struts inside were placed like a leather shape and uh, the reason probably it was cheaper and faster to make and both the back and the soundboard are braced like that. And one of the main features is that these guitars were therefore, because of that bracing, very loud, but not strong. They usually disintegrate after some years. This one has not an original bridge. And if you really look at it, it, it goes like that. <laughs> it has uh, bulging and, 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 and rare uh, twists in it. Also, this one is more of the higher grade models because it has gold trim, well, gold flaked trim around the sound hole in the body. The back is simply painted. The wood is probably birch wood and it's a bit stained like uh, walnut to give it a bit of class. Okay, now if you want to know more about uh, Stella guitars, I suggest you get hold of this little booklet and it comes with a CD and it's full of nice pictures and the story of Stella guitars. Here's a picture by the way of the guitar here on the other side this next to the banjo of the guitar I'm holding and uh, was made by Neil Harpy he was also a very good dealer of these kind of uh, guitars. In the video description just click on the more about this video you can uh, see some links to those uh, to a couple of dealers who do uh, sell these guitars because uh, I think if you buy one you should buy one from a reputable dealer. Uh, you can buy on eBay of course too but uh, then you have uh, the risk of well buying junk of course. This one well I was kind of lucky I bought it on eBay but uh, since it wasn't really playable I was able to get a, a discount for it. Okay, now we have more to come. This one is a Supertone, and Supertone was the brand that was made for uh, Sears and Roebuck. So they mainly sold it to, uh, through their catalog, and hence they call it a catalog guitar. And this one is really nice. Uh, well, it's, it's, I think it's a student model. Uh, because Supertone was a really cheap brand. So even the higher end Supertones were, uh, well, uh, pretty basic guitars. The woods, well, I have no idea what kind of wood it is. It has a nice streak in it. Could be oak, but I'm not sure about it. This one was restored too, non-original bridge. 
and uh, well, I just paid, I think, about three hundred fifty dollars uh, six years ago. And so it shows that it, these guitars don't have to be really expensive. They're cheap guitars in in the days when they were made. They were cheap guitars, and they're still cheap. But they have a well, let's say a lot of mojo. I think maybe because of the the age of the woods. And uh, well, I'll play a bit on this one. Features of the sound of a parlor guitar is that um, they have very uh, clear trebles. Maybe not a strong bass, but it's still very audible. For the small size, they have surprisingly good sound. Also, know that the um, Fretboards are usually flat, so you have to be well uh, get to know that, and it's a bit more difficult to take bar chords, and they usually have wider necks. Um, also, the necks are really sometimes what we call, to, in, compared to today's standards, uh, fat. Uh, also, for the reason there is no truss rod to adjust the neck. So a lot of these guitars also need a rec neck reset because they're old and they have been warping. And also to give uh, the, the neck some strength, they made fat necks. Okay, now we still have another one. And this one is uh, also a Supertone. It's, it's a more fancier model and you can see the airplane shaped bridge. It's a commemorative model made in 1927 when uh, Charles Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic. This one is, uh, I think, mahogany and is really very light and very responsive. I think this one is really a good one. And uh, I'll play a little bit on this. G-tuning, by the way, with a kip on the second fret. Uh, the previous one I was in dropped D-tuning, and the first one, the Stella, I was also in open G-tuning. So, um, check out these little guitars. Uh, they can be fun to play, and you have a nice sound. They're also all 12 fret guitars, which means that the, they use a, a short scale, the length between the beginning and the end of the string. 
and usually modern uh, guitars have 25, 25 and a half uh, scale length, inch scale length. And these are usually about 24, three quarters or 20 and a half, 24 and a half. So shorter scale means that you can bend better. And for blues, that is uh, an important feature. Also, the strings I put on these, uh, well, and in general, you shouldn't uh, put heavy strings on these. I put uh, extra light strings on these. But um, it's called, an, I think, with the Dario Extra Light Custom. So it starts not with the 010 as the tin E string, but with a 011 and goes to, I think, uh, 52. So it's between lights, which starts with a 12. Uh, and extra light, which is uh, usually with a 10 starting. So that's another thing to uh, take into account that uh, for blues, these are really good guitars. And well, you can check out my other videos. I play them a lot and with good results, I think. Okay, I hope you like this little video. And check out the links. Uh, there's more info about parlor guitars in general, and uh, which you find useful.